know, it almost feels like there's nothing in there, but I guess whatever it is, it's right there. Well, I guess there's a hundred in there. I'm not going to bother counting them because if there's only 99, what are you going to do, right? I do believe this is going to work. I can well imagine though that these will plug up quickly but even if I only got to use say one a day I got a hundred days use here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, sort of happy. We'll see how it goes. Now I just know that I'm going to be getting comments over the mistake I made in yesterday's video. I had said that when you move the slider into the green, it takes away green, and I realized immediately after I said it that that was backwards. What I meant to say is, when you slide it into the green, it will make it more green. Yeah, and I, I actually did realize my mistake immediately after I said it, and then I went to correct myself and I got on some big tangent about how the camera was seeing too much green, and so it was uh, subtracting uh, uh, green and adding uh, magenta, and you know, anyway, uh, I forgot to correct myself there. So yeah, I, I said that wrong. Um, but you know what? I'm thinking that we have a little bit too much green still. I'm going to set it at neutral, and uh, I'll just lock it in at neutral. I won't have the auto white balance turned on, though. This seems to be working a lot better. At least I think it is. Now, I am old enough that I can clearly remember hearing Richard Nixon speaking. And I think I mentioned this once before. But one of the things that he was noted for saying was this. Let me make this perfectly clear. In fact, people used to sort of make fun about it. They used to call it, let me ma his ma make it perfectly clears. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I want to make this perfectly clear. When it comes to the wooden decking, I will fully... I fully understand and I will admit readily that at f when first impressions of wooden decking is wow that looks good I'll admit that okay I still don't know what I'm gonna do here at this moment am I gonna put down wooden decking or am I gonna try Nigel's uh, uh, idea I don't know uh, however I have done a lot of viewing on YouTube ordinary guys like myself trying to put down the wooden decking and they, they do they get it down but in almost every one of the videos something will be said to the effect of oh I notice it's sort of coming up here on the edge a little bit I wonder how I can get that down um, and when anybody who sh you know if they're shooting uh, decent close-ups and they're sharp you can see it looks like something that has been stuck down. Um, 
first first impressions are lasting impressions and the first impression is wow that looks good because generally what you do is a model this big you don't you don't stick your nose right down on the deck and look at it you're looking at it from maybe two three feet away and yes it looks good um now uh I'm, I'm sort of beating this to death aren't i i have a tendency to do that now on the bismarck we just took our deck tan and it was a mixture of something and we just did the whole deck. I didn't weather it. I didn't do anything. To me, that looks not that bad. It looks pretty good, in fact. Um, until, unless you look at it real close. But then when you take a look and you see what Nigel did on the deck, on his piece of Titanic deck, uh, well, that looks really good, too. Uh, in fact, it looks a lot better, to be honest with you. Um, but <clears throat> I'm thinking that it might be just a little bit beyond me both in dexterity of my hands to do a nice, delicate job, my uh, my artistic ability to be able to put a wash on afterwards to to sort of make it look weathered. Uh, I and not only that, it would take a lot of time to do a, a ship this big. Uh, I hope you understand here that w why I'm doing what I'm doing, and that is that that. Uh, you know, I'm just, I think I'm just, I think I'm probably just going to end up spraying our, our 78 here on, onto this. And uh, then later, the, the details, we'll, I'll just paint them a different color, probably a dark gray or something, so that they, so that they stand out. Uh, this is the same way I did on the Bismarck, and, and it looked not too bad. Did it look like uh, something you'd see in a museum? No, it didn't. But, you know, just uh, sitting there in my ship case over in the corner, uh, it, it looks pretty darn good, I think. Um, but like I say, I don't know what I'm going to do here. Um, again, again uh, today I was looking at uh, uh, some, somebody putting down a, uh, a wooden deck. And uh, he was saying something about if you happen to get it on a little bit crooked, don't try to straighten it because it will will buckle. And he used the term, if uh, it's sort of like memory plastic. You put it down, you get it right, and then all of a sudden it pops up. Um, yeah, I don't know if I want to go through all that hassle and frustration and the expense. Uh, yeah, well, like I say, I'm beating this to death here. Anyway. Just because I quoted Richard Nixon doesn't mean that I respected him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let me make this perfectly clear. Okay, let's assume for a minute that we're going to go along with Nigel's idea. And it's an excellent idea. And how long are these planks? Well, it appears that some are a lot longer than others. Okay, now this one, for instance, it goes from right here to right there. Okay, now the idea is that not all of these planks came off of the same tree, <laughs> obviously. Now, I know there are huge trees in the world, but I don't think there's a tree big enough to... Well, maybe there is to do all of the planking, but not teak trees. <laughs> um, so uh, some of the planks, and even if they were off the same tree, they're not going to be the same color all the way through. And uh, so some are going to fade a lot faster than others. Um, anyway, you know what I'm saying. So we got you got to have your planks different color to make it look natural the way the wooden decking is if you were to buy the wooden decking. Now, Nigel's idea was you cut s strips of masking tape the same length as uh, your your uh, plank on the deck here, this plastic one, and, and then you put the piece of masking tape over top of it. So, you know, it'd have to be about that long, I guess. But to get the width uniform, like the way it is on on this molded plastic deck, all of the uh, all of the uh, planking is is the same width. At least it appears to be to me. How how do I do that if I don't have one of these little cutting jigs like uh, Nigel was using? 
And I, I don't know if I'm going to get one or not. It's a handy little thing. If I happen to see one in the hobby store, I might pick one up. But I was thinking the other day that possibly there's a way that I could cut strips uniform width, uh, narrow, really narrow. And I and I, I think I, I think I figured out a way to do it. Maybe I just want to try that. Now that doesn't mean that I'm going to go ahead, paint the deck, put down a whole bunch of strips paint it again, uh, take some off, paint it again, take some off, do, do, do a, a final coat, uh, some sort of clear coat type thing that you can put a wash on and then wash it. I'm not saying I'm not going to go to all that work. So those of you who are hoping to watch me do that, watch somebody else who's done that. Uh, watch Nigel's video. He did, he did it right. You know, perhaps go over the XF78 or maybe even a very, very heavily thin mix of something like XF19 and just take it back and take the, the wood colour away and make it look a bit bleached and stuff. You can also use oils and do stuff, but we'll do that afterwards. Anyway, I, I just want to try and see if my idea of making a jig that will allow me to cut narrow strips of masking tape in uniform length will actually work. Now this may not work. What we've got here is a piece of plexiglass because I plan on cutting on it. And uh, I haven't tried this yet. So uh, just want to sort of clamp this down so it's not going to move. Okay. Now, got a, to me a tape here. Way back before I made the Titanic and Lusitania, uh, I was making army tanks. And uh, I would look for, let's see if I can get this on here now. Maybe I should be using the tweezers so I can get it just right. Anyway, let's say I wanted a, a Tiger tank in 1 35th scale. And uh, if, this, if the same thing was in Tamiya, I would go for Tamiya every time, even though it was maybe, oh, maybe half again as expensive as the, you know, the cheaper one. Because the Tamiya seemed to me to have a whole lot better detail than uh, anything else. And not, not everything to me is good, is, is the best, I'm sure. I think their paint is good, but it may not be the best. Other people might like uh, Viheo, and other people might like uh, Model Master, and you know, you know how it goes. You know, whatever works for you is the best. Okay, so now we're going to want to be able to cut uniform uniform width uh, pieces off of here. Okay? Now, here's my idea. Where's my model knife? Okay, I got it. It's a, it's a good thing that I can cut out the dead spots because it took me a minute to find it. Uh, okay, now here's the deal. I don't know if you heard me saying this before, but... I got a whole bunch of microscope slides here. Okay, now I think you can see what I'm trying to do here. I hope I got the camera angled right, and you can actually see the edge of the glass slide. Now we'll, we'll take our first one here. Now maybe this isn't going to work. We're going to hold it down tight against the tape. Uh oh, I guess I better angle it a little bit better. There, I think I'm getting it now. I'll just make one more pass to make sure. Okay, now the idea is if I take one slide away, like that, I should be able to make a another slice. Well, I think with a little practice, this might actually work. Now about these microscope slides. I can well imagine that there's somebody saying right now, I don't have microscope slides. How am I supposed to do that? Where do you get microscope slides?
Well, I got these from B&H Photo in New York City several years ago, and I just checked the receipt. Yeah, I've actually still got the receipt. And they were $3.49 at that time for a box of 72. And I bought 10 boxes. I don't know what I thought I was going to do with 720 microscope slides, but at the time it seemed like the right thing to do. Anyway, they're not that expensive is what I'm trying to say, and I'm sure you can find them on Amazon for, you know, not a whole lot more. Now, about Nigel's modeling bench. Uh, I don't usually push something, except that this idea that he had was so so darn good. Uh, yeah, I, I like that idea, but it's a, it's a lot of work. But a lot of this modeling stuff is a lot of work. Whoops. A couple of years ago, before I bought the Bismarck, I was watching somebody build a 148th scale trumpeter's uh, submarine. And, uh, yeah, he, he was also from the UK. And I, I'm sort of getting the impression that uh, model making is bigger in the UK than it is over here in North America. Now, I could be wrong. I'm just going by uh, the, the real talented uh, guys seem to be <laughs> across the pond, if you know what I mean. And uh, now uh, across the pond to them is over here. But I'm sort of wondering, is there nobody over here in Canada? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm just sort of filling in time here while I cut these strips. I'll just reposition the camera here and we'll just see how easy it is now to pull these up. Now, naturally, before, I'm, I'm probably not going to use these, but what a person would want to do would be to cut them to the right length. You remember, we did measure off the, uh, the uh, planking on the hull there. So, let's assume we wanted them this long. Okay, so we want to be able to try and, well, I'll, I'll reposition the camera here. Maybe I'll put the macro lens on. Okay, I think I moved in here, but as close as I can get to get the entire width from one one side to the other. Um, now, this one right here, this was the very first one we did. If you notice, I went, I cut the line a little bit crooked there. This, I think that's the way it goes. Let's see now, this is going to come out of there. Okay, we'll get it started like that. Okay, now I think this is how Nigel did it. He took a pair of tweezers and just pulled it up. Okay. Now, I don't know if we can uh, get another one here. I wonder if I can grab the end with the tweezers. Am I going to end up... No. It could be that, <clears throat> excuse me, this would uh, work better on a piece of glass. Maybe I'm not grabbing this right. I'm kind of ruining the ends. Okay, let's uh, move ourselves over to the uh, deck of the ship and see if we can lay one of these down on the planking and just see how it fits.
Well, it would be nice if it was a tiny bit narrower. But when you think that there might be... I'll, I'll swing the camera around so we're looking at it more down this way here. Okay, you can see that it's just a little bit wider than the actual planking. But like I was saying, it could be that when there's a little bit of bleeding under the masking tape, it will the actual area that, that is painted might be narrower than what this uh, tape is. Now, I'm not going to do it anyway. Uh, it, it, I can I can just see that it would it'll frustrate me to death trying to get you know two or three hundred little pieces like this on the deck. Um, it, it's just more than I I, I, I want to do. Uh, Nigel, if you're watching this particular episode, and uh, I don't know why somebody of your caliber is going to watch somebody of my caliber. However, uh, thank you for all the work you did to show this. I am sure that there are going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, other modelers out there far more uh, skilled than I am that are going to use your, your idea. You may never hear from them, but I'm sure that it's going to happen. It's a great idea, uh, and and the, and again, thank you. Uh, so, without beating this to death any worse, thanks for watching, folks, and all being well. We'll see you tomorrow.